Uh, Southwest Wildlife Conservation Center is a facility in Northeast Scottsdale that rescues and rehabilitates the larger native mammals. So we take care of things as small as skunks and raccoons, all the way up to black bears and mountain lions and everything in between. We receive animals from all different sources. Um, sometimes animals are injured or they're orphaned and the public will call us and then we'll go out and rescue those animals. And our goal is to make that animal healthy again so that it can go back to the wild. A lot of animals that we get are actually confiscated illegal pets. People think that they can make a bobcat or a coyote into a household pet and they'll find them perhaps when they're young and take them home and think with enough love and attention they can domesticate these animals. Of course that's not going to happen. You're going to get basically a wild animal that's lost its fear of people and that can be very dangerous. Maya! Maya girl! Maya girl! Come here! Maya! So we have a case where um, we have Maya the mountain lion who was purchased by a woman here in Arizona from a breeder and she basically just did kind of an online, you know, send a mountain lion to my house. And when Maya arrived, she was a cub. Maya had her own bedroom and she lived amongst this woman and her children. And luckily Maya was at a young age where, you know, she probably could have hurt the people, but she wasn't a full grown mountain lion. But this woman would take Maya for a walk down the street and luckily a neighbor at some point called the police and said, there is this woman walking a mountain lion down the road. So they came and knocked on the door. And luckily they did arrive at a time um, where the cats were young enough where they have, hadn't hurt anybody yet. So there, were, there was Maya, there were servals, there were other exotic cats. The woman was raising them, breeding them in her house with her young children. And certainly if Maya had continued to grow and become an adult mountain lion living amongst this family, it was just an accident waiting to happen. She did do some jail time because she was endangering the lives of her children. And you hear about it all the time, people that have owned a tiger since it was little and it was part of their family. And then eventually that tiger grew up and it killed the owner. And people just wonder, you know, where did that come from? Well, how could you not see that coming? There are some states, like I said, where it is legal. You can call up a breeder and purchase a mountain lion. And sometimes they'll even declaw these animals and take out their canine teeth, which is just basically mutilating the animal just so that we can try and make a pet out of it. Fortunately, Arizona has a lot of tough laws when it comes to wild animals as pets, so you're not allowed to have any wild animals as a pet here in Arizona. We do have some exotics. Every once in a while we will get something that doesn't belong here in Arizona. For instance, we have an African leopard, we have an Arctic wolf, we also have fennec foxes which are from Africa. And those all are special circumstances and special stories. We try to just specialize in native mammals, but every once in a while we hear a sad story and we need to help. And we also are a holding facility for the Mexican gray wolf. They're actually the most endangered land mammal in all of the United States. And we hold 14 Mexican gray wolves here at our facility for the um, endangered breeding program. So these wolves, at some point, um, if they have offspring in the future, those pups, when they're old enough, might be able to be released back into the wild where they belong. So at Southwest Wildlife Conservation Center, there's many different ways to get involved. One of the ways is you can actually adopt one of the animals. Now that doesn't mean you get to take Leonardo home or one of the bears, but your donation helps us to care for these animals by buying food and medicine. There are different levels, so you might be able to receive a stuffed animal, a certificate, a picture, and you can feel really good about knowing that your money is going to go to helping one of these animals. You can come tour Southwest Wildlife and see all of our sanctuary animals. You can see black bears and mountain lions and bobcats and Leonardo the leopard and all of those donations go directly to help care for the animals. Um, we have a lot of schools that come by every year. Different classes will come for field trips and they'll learn about all the different animals. Gotta come get it. <laughs> So as a uh, nonprofit with hundreds of animals to care for, we rely heavily on donations and as well as volunteers. We only have a very small handful of paid staff and then everybody else is a volunteer. So that's one way that people can get involved. They can contact us if they'd like to uh, offer their skills here at Southwest Wildlife. And people can contact us for more information. Um, they can go to our website, which is just southwestwildlife.org. There's a calendar section on there that tells about all of our upcoming events. We have full moon tours every month, which are a really neat way to experience the animals. You come at night with flashlights during the full moon and see what the animals are up to after dark.
they are guided and they are by appointment only, so you would need to call our education line or go to our website, southwestwildlife.org, and set up an appointment for a guided tour. We do special events, we have bear events and different things. If people have an animal emergency, that's also another thing that we help with. Um, we do have an emergency line and you can call our main number, which is 480-471-9109. And all of that information and our phone numbers is on our website as well.